The sun as we know is the main source of energy in our solar system. It radiates light and heat or solar energy which makes it possible to exist and sustain life on earth. Plants need sunlight to grow. Animals including humans need plants for food and the oxygen that they produce. Without heat from the sun earth would be freezing. Everything about the sun appears to be fairly static and constant. We see the sun rise in the east, set in the west, barely noticing it undergoing any changes. Or is it just an illusion? What if I tell you that the sun undergoes massive changes constantly and these changes in the sun can be very harmful for the life on the earth? This is the Universe Factory and today we are talking about a solar event that could have significant impact here on earth. But before that, if this is your first time on this channel and if you are new here, consider subscribing to the Universe Factory. Here we regularly post some interesting stuff and latest happenings in the world of astronomy. Subscribing is absolutely free for you, but it would mean world to me for supporting this channel and help growing it. Additionally, find us on social media platforms as well, links to which have been mentioned in the description down below. Be sure to check out. Now let's dive into today's video. It's going to be super interesting. Let's begin. Richard Christopher Carrington an English amateur astronomer was independently documenting sunspots on September 1st, 1859. While sketching the sunspots, he observed a bright, blinding flash of light around them. This flash of white light was nothing but for the very first record of a solar flare. But what is the big deal in that? This solar flare was so intense that it resulted in the geomagnetic storm that trembled the Earth's magnetic field when it hit our planet. The intensity of the geomagnetic storm was so powerful that the telegraph systems all over Europe and North America failed, in some cases giving their operators electric shocks. Auroras usually seen in polar regions were seen around the world in both northern and southern hemispheres. The aurora over the Rocky Mountains in the United States was so bright that the glow woke gold miners who began preparing breakfast because they thought it was morning. People in the northeastern United States could read newspaper by the aurora's light. This event is now known as the Carrington event. The Carrington event was the most intense geomagnetic storm in recorded history, peaking from 1st and 2nd September 1859 during solar cycle 10. This event showed us the prowess of the sun and how much vulnerable we are if anything such happens again with us. I mentioned earlier that the Carrington event took place during solar cycle 10. But what is the solar cycle and how is it numbered? The solar cycle also known as the solar magnetic activity cycle, sunspot cycle or Schwab cycle is a nearly periodic 11 year change in the sun's activity. This activity is measured in terms of variations in the number of observed sunspots on the sun's surface. Solar cycles have an average duration of about 11 years. Solar maximum and solar minimum refer to periods of maximum and minimum sunspot counts. These cycles can span from one minimum to the next. The first ever solar cycle was recorded in 1755 and currently we are in solar cycle 25 that began in December 2019. It is expected to continue until about 2030 and we are concerned about what effects it can have at its solar maximum. During solar maximum, large number of sunspots appear and the solar irradiance output grows by about 0.07%. Large solar storms often occur during solar maximum, just like the Carrington event that we discussed. On the other hand, during solar minimum, sunspot and solar flare activity diminishes and often does not occur for days at a time. But what are the factors in the ongoing solar cycle that the researchers have worried about? Everyone knows that the sun is a giant hot ball of plasma, but it is also a giant magnet having its own north and south poles. Researchers found out that the polarity of the sun gets reversed completely during each solar cycle. Now what does that mean? 
It means that the north magnetic pole becomes the south and south becomes the north during each solar cycle. This pole reversal generally takes place at around the solar maximum time. However, why the reversal of poles on the sun takes place is still a puzzle to be solved. But researchers pinpoint the reason towards the differential rotation of the sun. It means the sun doesn't rotate uniformly but it rotates slower around its pole than the equator, creating magnetic lines by plasma that when entangles with each other creates sunspots. Each solar cycle is also unique based on the total number of sunspots. Based on past cycles, the researchers predicted that the current solar cycle 25 would be mild. But so far the sun's activities are not quite as what were expected. It is going to be intense as it is reaching its peak earlier than the prediction of which was occurred in July 2025. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration or NOAA has predicted the cycle 25 to reach its maximum in between January and October 2024. So this is the high time for researchers to keep watch on solar flares that are relatively intense localized emissions of electromagnetic radiation in the sun's atmosphere. The solar flares are classified on the basis of their intensity and strength. B-class solar flares, the smallest, followed by C, M and X, which are the most intense. The Carrington event was the result of an X-class flare. But what about the solar flares since the current cycle 25 has started? The first X-class solar flare was unleashed on 3rd July 2021 that marked the beginning of the series of X-class flares that since have erupted. This flare caused a substantial radio blackout around that time. On 29 January 2022, the M-class solar flare caused a huge geomagnetic storm that contributed to the loss of 39 Starlink satellites. The next X-class flare erupted on 15 December 2022, causing chaos in radio communications for hours. Another X-class flare ignited on the New Year's Eve on 2022 and within two months another two X-class solar flares have unleashed just hours apart each other. On 21st February 2024, just 24 hours after twin flares erupted, the sun unleashed the most powerful X-class flare in over half a decade. These three flares disrupted radio communications here on this planet and researchers are scared that more such X-class flares will be erupted as the sun's activity reaches its peak. So what will happen on earth if such solar flares erupt? High solar activity may substantially impact NASA's Artemis missions to the moon. The energetic electromagnetic particles from the flares can harm the consoles, instruments and electromagnetic circuits aboard the spacecraft and may disrupt the radio communication. But on the bright side, satellites are relatively less vulnerable to the damage due to the cosmic rays during high solar activity. The geomagnetic storm as strong as the Carrington effect may adversely affect the GPS and navigation systems. It has been suggested that a geomagnetic storm on the scale of the solar storm of 1859 today would cause billions or even trillions of dollars of damage to satellites, power grids and radio communications. This could cause electrical blackouts on a massive scale that might not be repaired for weeks, months or even years. But on the more positive note, solar maximum will increase the aurora activities also called as the polar lights. We have posted a dedicated video about these polar lights, don't forget to check out. So as we prepare for the solar maximum, the dynamic nature of sun and unpredictability of solar activities remind us that we are just a small part of a big universe. As the science is progressing, it is encouraging us to look beyond our normal lives and connect to the grand plan that we call as the universe. Thank you for watching and joining us today in this incredible journey about solar cycle. I hope you got to learn something new today. Like and share this video with everyone around you. Comment down your thoughts below about this video. Do subscribe to the Universe Factory and press the bell icon next to it. This way you won't miss out with the latest updates and the happenings in the world of astronomy. It is a motivation to make more interesting videos like these in the suggestion.
I'll be back with yet another super interesting video for you soon. Till then, keep looking up.